All right, this is a video on maple syrup, pure Wisconsin maple syrup. Uh, this is kind of a basic video on cooking maple syrup. This is a sugar shack and a maple syrup cooker evaporator from Westfab. It's a high quality unit. I'd recommend it, except for these handles get really hot and you burn your hands. Yeah. Uh, insulated with fire brick and ins block, which is a mineral board. Warming pan. Sap goes in here, warms up from the steam. And then you set the dripper spigot, drips in here. All this boils off, gets up to about 100 degrees in here. And then when you're done with the batch, approximately four gallons, you open the valve, dump it into a bucket. Stack temp. Last year we got it up to 600. It's pretty freaking hot. Wall started smoking, so we had to uh, put some galvanizing on there so the shack didn't burn down. Uh, inside temperature. This whole place was filled with steam when this thing's running. Uh, wow. Yeah. The sap is not running right now because it's too warm out. Uh, there was snow here, and we got record high temps in the sugar bush. And now we're not getting any sap at all. And in fact, the buds are coming out on the trees. Uh, I'll show you that in a sec, and then we're going to go tap a tree, show you how to do that, and then we'll collect some sap. Alright, this is a maple tree. Uh, I couldn't tell a maple tree from any other tree when I first started uh, two years ago. Uh, we started with 12 taps, and now we're up to 50. Uh, but you see that white stuff on the bottom? That is a mold that grows on the uh, sugar. The tree's black because sugar comes out of it, I think. Uh, I'm not 100% on that. But you can tell, look at the bark. See how it splits? And then when you look up at the top, the bark gets smoother. Focus. And then uh, I'm going to show you another tree that's actually budding. That's bad. Okay, this is another maple tree. The last one was a sugar maple, you could tell because of the black bark. This is just a regular maple. Uh, and I wanted to show you this because the top is actually budding. Good for the tree, bad for us, because we like maple syrup. Uh, you can see those red buds? That turns the sap gray and bitter. So we're actually going to have to pull this bucket. Uh, wondering why the pink ribbon's on there? It's because in the winter time there's no leaves, so you can't tell it's a maple tree from the leaves. So it makes a quick and easy way to know that the, uh, this is a maple tree and we need to tap it. Uh, when you're tapping a tree, you always go nine inches from tap last year. Uh, it doesn't hurt the tree at all. The holes actually heal up and it is difficult to find the hole from last year because it's totally gone. You don't see any holes in this tree because they heal up right away. The hole goes only about three quarters of an inch deep. Uh, this is not the right way to tap a tree. There's many ways. This is just kind of a beginner way. This is actually this tap is made for a vacuum line. This is a piece of vacuum line, and usually these would be ganged together in series and then run to a main line, and then all the sap sucked out of the sugar bush by vacuum. We actually manually um, take them off the tree, put it in a larger bucket. You can see there's nothing in here. It's too warm. Good record high temps, like I said, it has to be below freezing at night for the uh, sap to run. So we're going to have to tell people no sap this year, sorry. Alright, let's go tap a tree. Alright, so now we're at a maple tree, we're going to tap it. Uh, normally we do this in the first week of March in northern Wisconsin because that's uh, just before it's supposed to start running. Uh, we're going to use a uh, tap that we got from uh, Anderson's Maple Syrup, uh, Cumberland, Wisconsin. I think these taps are made in Vermont. This is a piece of vacuum hose cut to about four inches long. And then this is the part that holds up the jug. This is a piece of Romex wire. Do not use 14 gauge, use 12 gauge wire. Uh, the 14 gauge, when the jug fills up, uh, it 
bends and drops your jug. These ones stay. All right. So you got a drill. You're gonna need a three eighths. You got a regular drill bit on there, metal drill bit. Uh, if you use a wood bit with a brad point, it goes about twice as fast. Got a little bit of mud on there on the way here. I'm gonna use a snowmobile, but about 14 inches, and then the snow melted. So anyway, here's the uh, hole from last year. It's on a totally different uh, part of the tree, on a different limb, or trunk, or whatever. So we go there. It's gonna go in about an inch. That's fine. Now, if the sap was running, it would kind of start dribbling out the hole right now, but. It's not. So, anyway, this is how you do it. Stick this part in the tree. We usually try to only go into about right there because the sap runs in the very outside skin of the tree. So, if you stick it in too far, it just plugs off the sap, supposedly. I like to keep them up high so you're not having to bend down. Alright, take a little loop. Put it on the tap. Make sure it's on there good and tight. And we got a muddy jug. I'm not going to use this one for uh, consumable syrup. Tree's tapped. Normally you get about a gallon of sap every day. For each tree, we tap 50 trees, so that's 50 gallons a day. Uh, in the last two weeks, we only got five gallons. So, no maple syrup this year. It takes 40 gallons of uh, sap to make a gallon of syrup. All right, so now we're at a maple tree. It's been sitting here for about a week, and it's finally got about a half a gallon in it. Not very impressed with that. Hope you're not either. That is maple sap. One out of every 40 drips is... Uh, a drip of maple syrup. So now you go over and you put it in the bucket. Make sure the bucket's clean. No flies in there. Nope. No dirt. Nope. Amazing. 40 gallons of that. Evaporate it down, you got a gallon of maple syrup. You can make that into candy or you can dehydrate and make it into sugar. Alright, this is a special tree. This would be considered a Holstein cow tree because it just keeps pumping it out no matter what. Uh, there's actually three jugs on this tree. So we call this tree jugs. Uh, there's four trunks. Uh, normally those would be full, uh, so this would be more than a three gallon tree. Sometimes you can put one of those uh, five gallon pails on this tree and it'll just fill it up in a day. But not this year. Interesting note, uh, you see a tap there. We tap this tree up high over here because of the V in the trunk and that jug filled up and the others didn't. Um, usually these freeze at night and then you have to thaw them out in the sugar shack uh, so you can get the sap out of the frozen jug. Uh, it is the, the freezing temperature that causes the tree to, the sap to come down and then the warm temperature during the day causes the temperature, temperature differential and uh, the hydraulic pressure pushes the sap out. At least that was the best explanation that I've heard. Uh, that's all I got for you from the sugar bush. This tree is not budding yet, so it's still good to go.